Hey everyone, today we're painting a really cool interior design and we'll start with the initial line work sketch and end up with the final image. My name is Victor, I'm a concept artist and this painting took around 2 hours to complete. Also it's a continuation of an image I did in the previous video with the desert temple, so if you checked it out already, awesome. If not, the link is in the description. So what are we trying to paint today? It's, uh, it's gonna be like an enclosed space, maybe like the entrance inside a temple and uh, I think we can come up with like a huge door uh, like from Tomb Raider or Indiana Jones so it's gonna be like a huge entrance and the environment around it. The beginning of the process is usually the most intimidating, the most challenging uh, when you have to come up with a design, composition and you don't know yet if it's gonna work out in the end. But luckily nobody does so it's totally cool. Don't worry about this, it's normal. That's why I'm beginning to work like in a really economical way with the brush strokes and trying to quickly fill our main shapes with color. And this step is basically me trying to reach to a point where I can understand that my initial sketch, my composition, my idea is going to turn out well. So that's why I'm not super precise right now and I'm just trying to fill in all the gaps, all the shapes with value, comparing them between each other, see how everything works and how everything reads. You can just grab a large brush and glaze over the background and then all these shapes that we established with the line in our first sketch. And this part is really fun, you don't have to be like super precise, but keep in mind that you're working towards a very nice value metric, so the contrast between light and dark for now. And it's not like you have to make decisions that are final, you can adjust things as go so just work towards having those nice and readable values okay so now to tackle the door design it's pretty rough in the sketch so to make things easier you can just paint it like it's a frontal view without any perspective it's much easier and then by using a simple transform tool adjust it according to your perspective so in this case you can stick it on the wall in the background i'm thinking we'll repeat the same design cue with the crystal on this door the same as in the exterior temple area we're kind of eyeballing the position and moving on with some colors So you've kind of noticed that the whole thing is a little bit monochromatic right now and it is true. So we kind of have this uh, very warm palette starting with the foreground. You can introduce maybe some color that is less saturated and maybe a bit colder as well as describe the form a bit. And depending on your goal, have it your cite some proper references. If it's a realistic palette you're looking for or maybe it's something more stylized and exaggerated. Let's also add like a path trail in the foreground, make it a bit brighter and less saturated. And by using a brush with a flat tip, it's very easy to kind of build this type of shapes. As you move on, you can treat the other planes the same way. Now I'm gonna mess with these columns a little bit, showing the form a bit, maybe add some segments to them so they don't look so plain. Just keep in mind that there is a balance of details and calmer areas. It's very important not to overload the image with lots of details and contrast because the viewers will not understand where they're supposed to look. We have the main focal point and the rest of the area is sort of working towards the same common goal.
For this wall in the background, the same thing, with first a few marks to just show that there is some texture variation, a bit more structure and form to the door, and you could also break it down into smaller shapes as well to make things more interesting. Color variation, texture variation, all are really important and kind of helping you create a more believable image. So now with the crystal in the middle of the door, I'm thinking eventually the light could come from the upper right corner and you want to render it accordingly in this case. The process is very straightforward. I'm not using for now any layers with blending options, multiply, overlay and all that stuff. Just plain painting and if you want to have more control or maybe you want to backtrack some of the progress, then feel free to create as many layers as you want. It's really not important. And of course, as you work, you may have too many of those, so try to collapse them time to time just to organize your workspace a bit better. All right, this part is really cool. The scene right now is pretty flat, right? So we need the juicy contrast of value somewhere and we will add some nice lighting on the back wall. Now, how easy it is to do it? It's extraordinarily easy. You just have to make brightness levels adjustments on top of your layers. For convenience, I copied and collapsed them. So now I have the whole background as a separate layer, then increase the brightness and adjust the light as much as you want. And then you just have to put a mask on top of it and erase the areas that you want to be hit by the light. It's a super basic process available in any painting software. Great! And now you can design the shapes you want to have, so obviously you can also bring in some shadows to make things a bit more realistic, also some additional color variation of the margins of the light, maybe some gradients to adjust the intensity of the light in some areas of it, just not to make it so the lighting is not super flat. Cool, so now the painting feels way more interesting. We have a strong contrast of value around our focal point. Let's just keep an eye on the composition and make sure it's not too much contrast everywhere. Maybe some parts have to be a little bit toned down uh, to make a mess of things. From this moment, it's all about smaller details, touch-ups, for example. To add a little bit more life in the foreground, you could put some specular highlights. Uh, now that our back wall has some really bright spots, so this will tie in the planes better. Then check out the whole image for areas that may seem too rough or not clear. How much time you spend on detailing and polishing is completely up to you. In my case, I've sort of already developed a habit and I'm noticing the time while recording and I'm going like, oh, it's two hours, we're close to finishing time, so, you know, let's round it up. And I think I'll try to make a longer process in the future to push the painting even more. So let me know in the comments if you're looking for more detailed painting that I've spent more than, let's say, two hours. For the last steps, maybe push the colors a little bit more with some color filters or maybe work on the edge variation and things like that. Sharpen the image if you want.
All right, this is the final image. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe and drop a like. It helps a lot. Ask any questions you have in the comments. I'm trying to answer as many as I can. Thanks again for watching till the end and I see you in the next one coming soon.